Next, we're going to take a look at macros. And I know a lot of people in the stream always ask me about my macros. Uh, most of them have uh, stayed unchanged since MOP, actually. A couple, let's see. Couple new ones that I've gotten are Focus Spell Steal. I didn't use this last expansion, and I'm pissed. I should have. It's very good for stealing, um, you know, like Nature Swiftness from a Druid, something that needs to be really fast, but you don't want to change your target in Spell Steal. Focus Spell Steal, fantastic. By the way, guys, a link to all my macros will be down below in the info section. And let us see. Thank you, Palmer. My Ice Nova macro. So this. Right when the spell came out, I made this macro. Um, I mean, I don't want to take credit for it. Maybe someone made it before I did, but you know, I thought of it myself. It's just a cast harm into the Ice Nova. One of the main problems with Ice Nova is that if you're spamming it and someone feign death, someone shadow melts, you lose your target. Um, one of these, you know, pre-spectral guys, for example, it drops your target. Right? You have no control over that. If you're spamming Ice Nova at the same time it's going to be cast upon yourself. Um, let me let me show you. So Ice Nova, if it's on your bar, I'm going to be clicking for this example, because fuck it. Um, you know, whatever you say, you're targeting your water elemental, water elemental for whatever reason, it gets untargeted, then you're going to be targeting yourself, and you're going to be using Ice Nova on yourself, which is not what you want to do. You want to save it to burst, so it's, it's terrible. So, you, you know, Fuck, fuck the actual spell, make a macro, put, uh, you know, slash cast, harm, in brackets, and then ice nova. It'll only work on enemies, so I try to use it on myself, it doesn't work. Try to use it on a friendly target, doesn't work. Try to use it on a pet, doesn't work. Normally it would in all these situations, and you'd be wasting your ice novas um, from all these spells like Vanish and Shadow Milm. So this is probably the best macro of the expansion. Um, everything else is pretty much the same. I'll, I'll quickly go over them. Um... Counterspell 1, Counterspell 2, Counterspell 3 for corresponding uh, arena enemies. It's, it's it's just nice to be able to sheep one guy, uh, you know, deep the other, Counterspell the third, something like that, without having to change focus or anything. Um, Decurse Party 1, Decurse Party 2, all of these are listed down below, guys, if you want to check them out. Um, but yeah, this is nice for just quick decursing. Um, other than that, it's really just, you know, focus polymorph. Um, let's see, focus counterspell, focus deep, you know, just, just the basics, focus counterspell, but the one I really did want to show you guys that was new that I made this expansion was the Ice Nova one, because I, I think many people don't know about this, and it, I think it, this should be, you know, pretty widely known. And next I'll briefly talk about add-ons, um, save queue. It makes it re yeah no, there there's the perfect perfect explanation removes the leave queue button for arenas and battlegrounds so you don't accidentally hit leave queue obviously not a needed add-on but it helps omni cc uh, counts the cooldown and uh, a lot of people will say well there's a built-in one now for you know Blizzard has a built-in omni cc uh, that's true it's in the interface options somewhere I like omni cc it looks better for one and for two it is more. Uh, it works better with Gladius, I, I, I guess, you know, just very easy to say, it works, it works better with Gladius, and so I, I like, I like Omni CC still, I'm used to it, it's not needed, you can use the, you can use the Blizzard one if you like, Gladius, um, a lot, a lot of, you know, streamers, YouTubers will have this, Gladius is, um, an, an enemy unit frame add-on, it just shows their cooldowns, shows their health, their mana, uh, and their DR. Very important that it shows the DR so you can know when you can sheep again, when you can deep again, when you can swap again. You can revolve your entire gameplay around these these DR trackers. So it's, it's very, very good for that. And also, the trinket tracking is amazing. Omnibar is just like Interrupt Bar from last expansion. I don't even know how Omnibar, how long it's been around. I just found out about it. But I like it better than Interrupt Bar because... Um, it just it's just a little cleaner a little a little sleeker it, it shows uh, it, it seems like it tracks everything more accurate less buggy but it's basically an interrupt bar from last expansion um, from here I'll talk about gear for a little bit um, there's no reforging anymore so it's 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 pretty gear is pretty easy uh, the easiest way to get gear is just to armory myself for another Tom mage and copy the gear it's pretty easy but if you want to know the reasoning behind things uh, if that's just your personality type or something. Um, 
haste is your best stat, versatility is your second best stat. Behind that, it doesn't really matter because you can choose all your gear just based off of that, but behind that it is uh, mastery, multi-strike, and then crit. Uh, these are different than PvE stat priorities because of the way Blizzard programs their game. It's just inherently different. They make the values different than PvP and PvE. So, you know, if there's someone that does PvE in this stream, I know it's, it's much different than PvE. Multi-strike, I guess, is really good in PvE, but in PvP it is not. So yes, haste and then versatility. An argument can be made um, for the opposite, versatility and then haste. I, I don't think this is wrong in any sense. I think versatility is a great stat, and I think in some, in some comps you can actually run versatility over haste. The reason haste is so good is because, like I said uh, previously, the main goal of mage is getting their sheeps off every 30 seconds and then bursting. To get the sheeps off, you need a lot of haste. A lot of the times it's really easy to get interrupted without this haste. It makes frost bolts quicker. It makes your global cooldowns quicker, which a lot of people don't know. It makes everything quicker. Same reasoning with the deep freeze glyph, guys. Mages, you have to be quick. You have to be deadly. Like, you have to just, you know, do all your damage and just, you know, kill someone really quickly. So, you know, haste just, just makes you be able to do everything much quicker. I guess is I guess is the underlying reasoning for that. And versatility makes you do a lot more damage. It's actually a uh, fun fact. It increases your damage by more than any other stats. And additionally, it has the secondary bonus of making you take less damage. So not only does it increase your damage by more than anything else, but it also um, decreases the damage that you take by. Um, for me, it's uh, a little over one percent. So it's a pretty insanely good stat too. Um, burst rotation for mages in arena is pretty simple. You're gonna be getting your CC and then getting your Comet Storm and then doing your double ice novas. That's pretty simple. In a duel, it's kind of the same thing, except there's some variations. Um, I'll go down here and uh, duel somebody. Hopefully, there's somebody to duel. Um, come duel. In a duel, a lot of the times, you'll just be deep freezing with an orb. Remember, deep freeze is off global cooldown, so you can do them both at the exact same time. Deep freeze and orb, and comet storm. Deep freeze in this patch breaks from ice nova, and it breaks from ice lands. So orb and comet storm both don't break it. So you can orb, you know, orb on use, deep freeze, and a comet storm. It takes two globals, and then double ice, or frost bolt, and then into the end of the deep freeze, and then double ice nova out. It's a lot of burst. It's a lot of burst, barely any setup, barely any casting. And this is what you want to do. This is your burst rotation in a duel and be in battlegrounds and any solo instance. This is what you want to do because dueling isn't allowed here. All right, let's go over here. This is what you want to do because it has to be of your stun. You don't have a rogue stunning. You don't have a feral stunning. You know you don't have a shadow freeze disarming. It's it's just you. So your deep freeze instead of deeping in the sheep, your deep freeze is going to be used to burst. And this isn't a one v one situation. In arena. You're going to use Deep Freeze as uh, a spell to keep your target still, and you're going to be using um, your, you know, your Rogue Stun or your Warrior Stun to actually burst into, and it's the same thing, Comet Storm and Double Ice Nova. The difference in a duel is you want to min-max more because it's a duel, and so you're just going to Deep Freeze, you know, with your Orb and your Comet Storm, you're going to, you know, chill, Frostbolt, and then Double Ice Nova after. In Arena, it's all about getting as much damage as you can really quickly because that CC is on a timer, everything's on a timer, everything needs to be quick, like I've been stressing a lot. So Comet Storm, Double Ice Nova, as quick as you can in a 3v3 in an RBG situation. In a duel, it's um, just like this. And you can just spam ice lance until they die. Because I'm a mage, and that's what mages do. But yeah, as you saw, a very large amount of burst in a very short period of time. A lot of it's due to Comet Storm not breaking deep freeze anymore. Um, great change by Blizz Blizzard this patch, love it. So yeah, that's, that's, that's general burst rotation. If you want, you can rewind the video. I explained it many times um, if I went too quickly. So, I want to briefly talk about mage objectives in Arena. 
I, I talked about it before when I was talking about blazing speed and you know just generally throughout the throughout the entire video. But getting those sheep every thirty seconds, it's a, it's an art. You have to master it. A bad mage will get like two or three full sheep in an entire game out of arena, and a good mage will get them on DR. Like the sheep has you know a whatever eighteen to twenty two second DR based on server ping. And if you get that sheep right when it comes off, you know, be deeping preemptively. Sheep has three seconds left on DR. You can deep freeze and start casting your sheep right when it comes off DR. Boom, you get that full sheep, and that means you can go quicker. You have more offensive pressure. Um, with you know, with offensive pressure, be, um, comes defense. If you're doing more damage to them, you're taking less damage yourself because you know they're on their back foot. It's everything stems from getting that blazing speed deep freeze sheep on exact cooldown. I cannot stress that enough. They just don't do that. They just don't, and you have to, to be, to be, you know, a uh, high-rated mage. It just, that's just, that's your goal in Arena, is getting that sheep on cooldown. Um, like I said, it takes some, it takes some practice. It takes some mastery. Uh, there's many interruptions, as you guys probably know. Kicks, counterspells, silences, grips, knockbacks, traps, you know, stuns, dazes, like there's so many things that are gonna stop you. So you have to blazing speed around the corner, line of sight these things, um, fate cast before they, before they, you know, before you try to get the sheep, you know, during your sheep DR, get all the kicks out of the way so that when you actually wanna get your sheep, they're all out of the way. Things like that, you just have to become a master at getting those sheeps on DR. Um, other than that, once you get the sheep, like I said, you're going to be doing your Comet Storm, your Double Ice Nova. Once a minute, you're going to have your on use, and every two minutes, you're going to have your, your Trinket, and it's up to you to decide, you know, what's my partner doing? How long is the CC chain for? What other cooldowns do they have? Am I going to be using an on use and an orb for this? Am I going to be using just an orb? Am I going to be using just an on use when I get this? Am I going to be using everything because they have no Trinkets left? This is the kill. It just depends on what cooldowns are remaining, what cooldowns you know, you've know you gotten, and how much uh, you plan to get from this. Some stuns, some deeps in the sheep with a, you know, with a cheap shot aren't meant to kill. They're just meant to, you know, get them on their back foot, meant to, you know, get pain suppression, meant to get bubble from a monk. You don't want to kill, so you don't want to use everything every time it's up. You want to use, you know, some cooldowns to trade for their cooldowns, some cooldowns to kill. Uh, so it's it, that's going to take some more mastery, and that's something, it just depends on the situation. I can't explain fully when you're going to be using each cooldown, but you have to use them, you know, accordingly based on what you're fighting and what cooldowns they have left. Positioning, I have positioning guides on my YouTube channel for every single map, but what I wanted to say about positioning in this guide is that always, always, always keep in mind that your healer is like 20 yards behind you. Don't go running around a pillar and then dying and then blaming it on your healer. Always keep in mind, if you run around a pillar, you're not going to get heals anymore. Your healer's line of sight, it's impossible to heal you. So just keep in mind, your healer's behind you most of the time, or he should be, and... Um, you know, don't just run in and, and and go super offensive all the time. A lot of times you need to play defensive, get healed up, and then run in at full HP if you want to get a deep sheep. You know, run in at full HP. Don't just, you know, don't just uh, run in at 10%, so, you know. Keep in mind your healer's always behind you. Use pillars to avoid casts. I have all the guides for every single map um, down below on my YouTube, but, you know, that's just basic, basic, basic positioning for Arena that a lot of people tend to forget about. Um, I wanted to do, you know, just talk about quickly about mindset. Have to stay positive in arena. You see so many players that, you know, will blame the game, get, you know, upset, like mad, frustrated, myself included, sometimes. But try your best to stay positive. If something, you know, if you fight a hunter and the hunter kills you, don't say fuck hunters. The hunters are in the game, okay? Hunters are in the game, just like any other classes in the game. Critically think, how do you beat them next time? What can I do better? You know, constant improvement, man. Kaizen, like you just have to constantly be getting better at what you're doing or else you'll never become a, a great player. I mean, that's just that's just the fact of the matter. You can't always be blaming one thing. You can't be blaming this thing or this thing. If, if something's a problem, fix it. If you lagged that arena match, fix it. Don't lag again. If you, you know, fucked up a macro, fix it. This process should be very quick of constant improvement. There shouldn't ever be, oh, I, I missed my macro. It's like, you, you miss it once, you fix it. You miss, you fuck up a keybinding, we'll fix it. You fuck up a rotation, we'll fix it. 
eventually there's going to be nothing to fix and you're going to have great gameplay, okay? Like, it's just, it's constant improvement and it's that mindset. And it's, you can't be blaming things. You can't be blaming people. You can't be blaming your teammates. Just just get, do better. Take the blame on yourself and do better next time. So many people just don't get that, man. They just don't. That's how you improve the quickest way possible.